Welcome, medical students, to today's lecture on the topic of atrial septal defects, ASDs. In this comprehensive script, we will delve into the embryological origins and development of ASDs, classification based on anatomical features, hemodynamic repercussions, diagnostic imaging techniques, the role of cardiac catheterization, clinical implications, associated cardiac anomalies, clinical presentations at different stages of life, long-term consequences, surgical repair techniques, advances in transcatheter interventions, and long-term outcomes for patients with successfully repaired ASDs. During the embryonic stage, the atrial septum undergoes complex development involving septation and fusion processes. Any disruption in these processes can lead to the formation of ASDs. Understanding the pathogenesis of ASDs, from fetal development to abnormal formation of the atrial septum, is crucial for comprehending the underlying mechanisms of this congenital heart defect. ASDs can be classified into different types based on their anatomical features. The four main types are osteum secundum, osteum primum, sinus venesis, and coronary sinus defects. Each type has distinct characteristics in terms of location and associated abnormalities, necessitating tailored management strategies. The presence of an ASD allows abnormal blood flow between the atria, resulting in a left-to-right shunt. This shunting can lead to volume overload on the right ventricle and pulmonary overflow. We will analyze the hemodynamic consequences and thoroughly examine the impact on cardiac function in the pulmonary vasculature. Echocardiography plays a pivotal role in diagnosing and characterizing ASDs. We will explore the echocardiographic evaluation techniques and imaging modalities used to accurately identify and classify ASDs, including two-dimensional, Doppler, and transesophageal echocardiography. Cardiac catheterization provides valuable information regarding hemodynamics in patients with ASDs. We will emphasize the significance of cardiac catheterization in evaluating the severity of shunting, assessing pulmonary pressure, and determining the need for intervention. ASDs can exhibit different sizes, ranging from small to moderate and large. Each size category has distinct clinical manifestations and management considerations. Understanding these variations is crucial for determining the appropriate treatment approach and predicting long-term outcomes. ASDs often coexist with other cardiac anomalies. We will explore the common associated abnormalities, such as mitral valve prolapse, tricuspid valve regurgitation, and pulmonary stenosis. Recognizing and addressing these concurrent cardiac issues is essential in providing comprehensive patient care. ASDs can present with diverse clinical manifestations at different stages of life. We will discuss the signs and symptoms specific to infancy, childhood, and adulthood, enabling early detection, accurate diagnosis, and timely intervention. Untreated ASDs can have detrimental effects on both cardiac function and the pulmonary vasculature. We will explore the long-term consequences of uncorrected ASDs, including right ventricular dysfunction, atrial arrhythmias, pulmonary hypertension, and Eisenmenger syndrome. Surgical repair remains the primary treatment modality for ASDs. We will delve into the various techniques employed, including traditional open-heart surgery, less invasive percutaneous closure procedures, and transcatheter options. Understanding the nuances and benefits of each approach is vital in optimizing patient outcomes. Recent advancements in transcatheter interventions have revolutionized ASD closure. We will discuss novel techniques and devices, such as septal occluders, which offer minimally invasive alternatives to traditional surgical approaches. Staying updated on these advancements ensures the delivery of cutting-edge medical care. After ASD repair, patients require long-term follow-up care to monitor their cardiac function, assess potential complications, and optimize outcomes. We will delve into the long-term prognosis, potential complications, and the necessary follow-up protocols for patients who have undergone successful ASD repair procedures. In conclusion, atrial septal defects represent a significant congenital cardiac abnormality with diverse implications across various aspects of cardiology. Through a comprehensive exploration of embryological origins, classification, hemodynamic repercussions, diagnostic techniques, clinical presentations, management strategies, and long-term outcomes, we gain a comprehensive understanding of ASDs. This knowledge equips us to provide optimal care for patients with ASDs, ensuring improved quality of life and extended prognoses.